Electron configurations of the periodic table. Uh, valence electrons. So we divide val electrons into two different groups, valence electrons and core electrons. The valence electrons are the electrons that are, that are in the outermost principal shell, the principal shell that has the highest principal quantum number, so the highest n. In argon, that was 3, because we ended up with 3p6. 3 is the highest level. In the, in the hotel, it's the highest floor that has any electrons staying on it. All of the electrons in that highest floor that has anybody in it, those are the valence electrons. All of the other electrons are core electrons. The valence electrons are really important because the electrons in that highest shell are more on the outside of the electron of the atom. They're, they are the ones that interact with other atoms. So understanding how many valence electrons an atom has is really important for understanding how that atom behaves. If we look at silicon, here's the electron configuration for silicon. Um, and if we look through these numbers, one, two, three, three is the highest principal shell. Three is the highest floor in the hotel that has anybody on it. And so all of the rooms on that floor count. We're going to figure out how many electrons are in on the third floor. Well, there's two in the S room and there's two in the P room. That's a total of four valence electrons. The electrons on the lower floors are called core electrons. And so there's eight, uh, 10 of them. Does that make sense? Let's write an electron configuration for chlorine and identify which of the valence electrons which are the core electrons. Well, first thing we have to ask ourselves is, how many electrons does chlorine have? 17. Okay, so let's look at the periodic table, and we're just going to kind of count through the different levels until we get to chlorine. So first is the first row, there's just 1s, and we're going to use both of those blocks. That's 2, 1s2. On the second row of the periodic table, there's lithium and beryllium, that's 2s, and there's two electrons there. Then we jump across that chasm, and we get to the p block, and there's six of them there, so that's 2p6. And then we're on to row three, there's sodium and magnesium there, that's 3s2. And then we see that chlorine is almost all the way through that p block. Just count the squares up to and including chlorine. One, two, three, four, five. That's the 3p, and there's five electrons in there. Okay, so first, any questions about how I got the electron configuration for chlorine? You, you becoming okay with that? What's the highest occupied level? One, two, or three? Three. three. So we have 3s and 3p. They're all on the third level. In the hotel, all of these electrons are staying on the third floor. That's the highest floor where anybody's sleeping. These are the valence electrons, all of them. How many are there? Seven. seven. Two plus five. There's two in the S room, there's five in the P room. So seven, and I call them VE, valence electrons. Everybody else on the lower floors, those are core electrons. Core electrons. 2 plus 2 plus 6 is 10. Any questions? What group on the periodic table is chlorine in? 1a, 2a, 3a, etc. What is it? 7a. It's in group 7a. It has seven valence electrons. Not a coincidence. The elements in the same column of the periodic table all have the same number of valence electrons because they have very similar electron configurations. So here's chlorine. And here we're just looking at 
the highest floor in the hotel. We're ignoring the lower floors. We're just looking at the higher floor and seeing how many electrons are in which room. So 3s2, 3p5. When fluorine stays there, the 2s2 and the 2p has 5. The only difference between these electron configurations is that this has got the same number on a higher floor. Look at neon. 2s2, 2p6. Argon is 3s2, 3p6. How many valence electrons does it have? 2 plus 6 is 8. It's in group 8a. These guys have 7. They're in group 7a. These guys have 6. They're in group 6a. Look over here. 2a. 2 valence electrons. Again, helium is being ornery. Helium's over here. Helium does have a full valence shell. It's the lowest floor, but it is the highest floor that has any electrons on it. So we put him over here, but he only has two electrons, so he can't have eight. Do you see the pattern in there? The group numbers with the A tell us how many valence electrons each of these main group elements has. It's just written on the periodic table, literally. So except for helium, number of valence electrons for main group elements is the group number. Now what if you have a periodic table that doesn't have the A's and the B's? Well, they're labeled 1 through 18. Just knock the 1 off the front. Group 18, group 8A, it's an 8. You just ignore the 1's. The row number, which is the period number, tells us what is the highest occupied shell. So if we go back to this one, for all of these elements, the highest occupied shell is 3, because this is the first period, and the second period, and the third period. Helium fills up the first floor, neon fills up the second floor, argon fills up the third floor. So we looked at this before, but let's just look at it real briefly. Um, I'm, I'm liking the halogens today, so let's look at the halogens. See, 2s2, 2p5, 3s2, 3p5, 4s2, 4p5, 5s2, 5p5, 6s2, 6p5. There's patterns in there. Now, there are some exceptions. Uh, we're going to ignore them for right now. These guys like copper and chromium have to be pesky. So the transition metals in the middle, um, what's happening there is that the d orbitals are being filled. And so the number of valence electro electrons actually remains fairly constant, except for a couple of squirrely guys. Um, this is important. The principal quantum number of the d orbital that's being filled is equal to the row number minus 1. Okay, so what does that mean? So here's potassium, 4s1, calcium, 4s2, scandium, 4s2, 3d1. So this is filling up a d orbital, but this number 3 doesn't correspond to the row number. It's the row number minus 1. That's what I meant about, I imagine that those transition metals sank down a level, like a sinkhole or something. Is this 3D electron a valence electron? Is it in the highest occupied principal shell? If we think about the hotel, this has two electrons on the fourth floor, and this electron is on the third floor. Is the third floor the highest floor that any electrons are staying on? No, it isn't. That doesn't count as a valence electron because it's not the highest. As we go across here, we're adding 3D electrons. Most of these transition elements have two valence electrons. 
4s2, 3d1. The 3d doesn't count as a valence electron. 4s2, two valence electrons. Two valence electrons, two valence electrons. Chromium is being weird. Manganese, two valence electrons. Iron, two valence electrons. Cobalt, two valence electrons. Nickel, two cobalt, two cobalts, two valence electrons. Copper being weird. Zinc, two valence electrons. And that's happening with most of these transition metals. Look at most of them here. Um, tungsten, two valence electrons. The 5D orbital is beginning to fill up, but that's not on the highest floor of the hotel that has electrons staying there. See some people shaking their heads. Like, this is too weird. Any questions? If you could vocalize a question, that would be really helpful. Otherwise, I just don't know where to go with this. Um, we kind of talked about this already here, but it doesn't hurt to do it again. Using the periodic table to find the electron configuration for phosphorus, it's going to be neon, and that's the inner electron configuration plus this third level that's filling up, 3s2, 3p3. Because phosphorus has three electrons in the 3p subshell, two electrons in the 3s subshell. This is a list of instructions on how to write an electron configuration by looking at the periodic table. So use the previous noble gas in brackets to represent the inner electron configuration. Those are the ones that are, are down inside of the atom, the lower floors of the hotel. The outer electrons are determined from the, electron, the element's position within a particular block. So, you know, if we go over here, okay, this is, this is the S block, this is the P block, and it's in one, two, three. It's in the third position on row three. And so it's almost like picking theater seats or something. This is row three, seat three in the P section. This over here would be seat five in the P section of row three, right? And this is P6. The highest principal quantum number equals the row number, the period number on the periodic table. For the D electrons, it's the row number minus one. So let's do the electron configuration for tin. First of all, what's the element symbol for tin? Sn. So here we've got tin right in here. Let me draw a circle and box around him. So there's tin. So what we want to do is we want to identify the noble gas that comes right before. Xenon comes after, krypton comes before. So we've got krypton. And then we have to account for all of this. So this is 5s, and there's two of those filled up. 5s, 2, and then we've got this whole section is full. Those are the D block elements. Remember, this isn't 5D, it's 5 minus 1. 4D, and there's 10 seats occupied there, 4D10, or 10 beds occupied. And then we come over here, this is the P block, and here the numbers make sense again. This is 5P, and we're in the second position, 5P. Two. Any questions? This is something you need to practice a few times. So a good way to practice is get on YouTube. And I've done a bunch of examples in this lecture. Go up to the point where it says, you know, where we, I read the question, and then pause it. Do it yourself and then play it forward and see what the answer was. 
If you can get through all of the examples in this lecture and do it correctly by yourself, you're on the right track. Yes? How do I know which one to pick? Which element? Which noble gas? Okay, so one way to think of it is this. Here's the, I'm, I'm with tin. What I want to do, do is I want to go up to the next row and go all the way to the end and pick that one. These are the noble gases. We've chosen to use those because they fill up something. And so we know that's all full. So whichever element, any of the elements in row five here, you would use krypton as the starting point. It's like, okay, all the, all the electrons that are in krypton, and then we're just going to look at what's coming after that. So if I was going to do lead, I would go up one row all the way to the end, and I would choose xenon. Does that help? Yeah. Now, here's a question. This is the electron configuration for tin. How many valence electrons? Four. Four valence electrons. So there's two ways you can figure that out. What group is, in, is it in? It's in group four. It's got four valence electrons. Or looking at this, the highest occupied level is five. There's two electrons in 5s, and there's two in 5p. Two plus two is four. Four valence electrons. Any questions? 